Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's 10 Minute 2 Tip Tuesday. Here I am, Amelia Borland, occupational therapist and owner and founder of Higher Standards Caregiver Training. And here I am, live on Tuesday, uh, here to give you two super valuable tips in only 10 minutes. So the first tip, as always, is going to be for caregivers specifically. And the second tip is for caregiving organizations. Um, now, don't worry. I am going to explain why I have a nasal cannula in. And no, also don't worry. Uh, I am not on supplemental oxygen. But I do have a good reason for having this on my face right now. Um, before we jump into our tips, I do want to remind you that this the, this whole month, like this, the next few weeks of tips specifically for caregiving organization, we're going to be talking about tips to help you establish a safety first culture. Um, so make sure that you are staying tuned all the way um, all the way through Ten Minute Two Tip Tuesday, so that you're getting that valuable information. Um, also, before we jump right into our tips here, remember always. This is for educational purposes only. It's not a substitute for healthcare advice. It's not a substitute for a therapeutic relationship. Um, if anything that I say reminds you of someone or a situation that maybe you were in that you think needs to be addressed by a licensed healthcare provider, then please make sure you are reaching out to get that appropriate care, that appropriate treatment from a licensed provider as this really and truly is for educational purposes only. Okay, that's done, that's out of the way. We're gonna cut right to the chase today and talk about our first tip for caregivers, which is why I am wearing a nasal cannula right now. So so here, and there are so many things that you could talk about when, when we're talking about um, caregiving and supplemental oxygen, I mean, there are just a, a, a huge number of things that we could talk about. But I wanted to focus in on something today that I see and, and have seen throughout my clinical career almost universally when folks are on supplemental oxygen. And I want to discuss a little bit why maybe it's not such a good idea. Okay, so the thing that I that I have seen over and over again, I mean, I, I can't think maybe once in my entire career i've seen someone not do this before but it's i I'm, I'm guessing i'm just trying to give benefit of the doubt but but probably not this is something that i have seen very very consistently throughout my entire career as an occupational therapist working with folks who are on supplemental oxygen and so the thing that i see a lot of is people when they go to do things um, specifically, let's say, go to take a shower, um, people will take their supplemental oxygen off. Um, but this is honestly something, it's not just something people do when they're bathing. People might get up to go to the toilet and take off their supplemental oxygen. They might get up and go um, uh, 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 to the kitchen and take off their supplemental oxygen. And of course, understanding that sometimes being mobile with supplemental oxygen can be challenging and and that's a, that's a whole different conversation to have. But here's why I want um, to talk about this issue of people removing their supplemental oxygen when they actually go to do something and why most of the time that's really not the best idea. So if you think about it, someone is getting supplemental oxygen because they are not able to get enough oxygen um, just breathing the, the regular oxygen that is in the air. There's not enough concentration of that oxygen in the air to promote enough gas exchange for them, um, which is really just a fancy way of making sure enough oxygen is actually getting into their bloodstream. And of course, oxygen is super important, right? It, um, it Without oxygen, we cannot live. Our brains can't function. Every, we can't live without it. That's, you don't need me to tell you that. Sorry, I'm digressing here. So, Here's the issue. When we get up and move, when we are putting more demands on our bodies, our oxygen demands are going up, not down. So typically the case is if someone needs supplemental oxygen, um, 
then they don't just need it when they're sitting at rest. They need it while they're up and moving and actively participating in something. In fact, they actually need it more. Um, if you're to measure someone's oxygen levels, uh, their oxygen levels are going to go down while they're up and moving around. And that's simply because the demands being placed on their body are higher, so they need more oxygen in order to meet those demands. So what we don't want to do is take away people's supplemental oxygen when they need it the most. Now that might mean that we need to think about safe solutions in order to allow someone to have their supplemental oxygen while they are up and mobile, while they're bathing, while they're toileting, while they're doing these other things. Um, uh, but those solutions do exist. It's, it's important to talk to our providers and talk about what those, the safest way to manage oxygen lines are. But we really want to, to be aware of the fact that people's oxygen demands, again, are going up when they're active. Um, I just hit my mic and I hope it didn't blow anyone's eardrums out, I'm sorry. Um, but those demands are going up when people are active, not down. So if you need supplemental oxygen, if someone needs supplemental oxygen, then it's likely that they need that supplemental oxygen even more while they're doing that activity, not less. So we don't want to take it away. Um, okay, so that is tip number one for caregivers. Tip number two today for caregiving organizations Again, like I said, we're gonna be talking about, um, you know, this week and the next couple weeks following, and we did last week too, so if you haven't seen that one, that 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday, go back and check out last minute's 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday too to kind of get the full picture here. Um, we're talking about building a safety first culture in a caregiving organization. And so I wanted to talk about a kind of sticky issue that often comes up for your caregivers um, who are out there you know, doing the work, providing the hands-on service um, that caregiver caregiving organizations provide. And this is, of course, related to safety. And this is just a fact. It's an uncomfortable fact, but it is a fact um, that, that needs to be talked about and shared. And that fact is that your caregivers sometimes feel pressure to do things that are not safe. It's just true. This is true of healthcare providers at the highest level, um, just acknowledging that as a fact, all the way down to our non-medical professional caregivers. People feel pressure to do things that are unsafe because there's time constraints. Um, perhaps there are constraints in the environment that make it difficult to do things safely. Um, perhaps there are uh, requests from the client or requests from the family um, that are in and of themselves not safe requests and your caregiver may feel pressure to go along with those requests even though they're concerned that there might be a safety issue. And of course, let's also acknowledge that sometimes caregivers might feel pressure because they may be worried that the organization that they're working for just wants the job done and doesn't want to hear anything about how it's actually being done. Um, that's not something any of us want, any of us, any of us wish for, but the fact is that, that that can also be a pressure too. So, so what do you do to manage all these pressures to release this pressure from your caregivers so that they can make safe decisions and so that they can speak up when they have a safety concern? We need to really, really consistently communicate to our caregivers that safety has to be the number one priority. You know, there, and there are multiple parts of that, right? Certainly part of it is also, we have to train our caregivers in safe practices and how to make safe decisions. Because if we're not doing that, then we're setting them up for, for failure no no matter what their circumstances are. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm very hand talky today and I just hit the mic again. So again, I hope it didn't blow out anyone's eardrums. Um, so we have to actually train them in good safety practices to begin with, but we also have to be constantly reiterating to people that we have a safety first culture, that they don't have anything to fear if they make a safety report. 
um, that there are processes for them to make, be able to make those safety reports. We have to make it so crystal clear, so consistently all the time that we have our caregivers' backs when it comes to, well, when it comes to everything, but we've got their backs when it comes to safety issues um, so that they feel, can feel confident um, making the safe call and making a safety report if they need to. That is so, so important in creating a safety first culture. If we want to have a safety first culture, we have to really and genuinely, from, for every communication that we have with our caregivers, for every communication that we have with our clients, our residents, from the bottom of our hearts, we have to mean that we have a safety first culture. And by doing that, we can help to reduce that pressure by putting those systems in place, that training in place, we reduce that pressure that our caregivers are feeling from all of those external forces um, putting pressure on them to do things that maybe they are concerned are not safe. So really think about that this week. Um, make sure you turn tune in to next week's 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday as well, where I'm going to be talking more about um, other important things to consider when creating a safety first culture. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out, send me a message, um, you know, post a, a comment on um uh put a reply or a comment on the post you know whatever you want to do reach out however you feel comfortable uh, to ask those questions and i'm happy to help in any way that i can okay that's it for today's 10 minute two tip tuesday i hope that you found this valuable and enjoyable um and i hope most importantly that until next time you stay safe you stay healthy and most of all take care i will see you all next week bye everyone